Good morning, Central Baptist Church. Stand if you would. Let's sing. Serve the Lord with gladness. Good morning. Let me uh, start off today by saying a very special happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Thank you for everything you do for being one of the cornerstones of our families uh, and being the examples uh, to your children and to your husband. And uh, for some of you putting up with your husbands and having that patience uh, there too. So thank you uh, for all that you do. Uh, I hope you get celebrated today because you deserve it. Welcome to Central Baptist Church. Uh, glad that you're here today. Glad that you've chosen to come and worship uh, with us today. A uh, few announcements. We will not have any evening services today uh, due to Mother's Day. So next week, uh, we will be having our potluck lunch. Okay, I'm, I'm correct on that. Okay, all right, good. All right, David, do you have any announcements? No, I'm joking. Okay, all right. Um, and so that will be next uh, week. Uh, we have our blessings in May coming up, uh, May 15th, next Saturday. Uh, if you are interested in helping with that, there is a sign-up sheet in the foyer. You can contact uh, David Edgerly for more details. Today, we are going to uh, recognize our senior class of, of uh, what year is it, 2021. My goodness gracious. All right. Of 2021, we have in the youth group this year nine seniors uh, that we are going to be saying goodbye to. Uh, we have uh, five of them here today. Uh, four of them couldn't make it or just didn't want to go up on stage. So uh, we have the we have five here today that I would like to recognize and we have a gift for. We have Riley Lenore. <laughs> Uh, we have Colby Wehausen. <laughs> Kayla Menzel. Marley Barber. And Riley Kennedy. We also have Allie Davison, Allie Loftus, Braley Goodman, and Shelby Lund, not, not here today, that, that will be joining them in this graduating class. They have been 
a very strong class, uh, a class built around leadership, and they're going to be greatly missed, but the impact that they have left in the youth group will be felt for years. And so thank you all for all that you've done for this church and for this youth group. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, now you go. All right, is there any more announcements to make mention of? All right, well, let's pray and continue on in worship. Father, I thank you for this day, Lord. I thank you for all the ways that you love us, all the ways that you bless us. Uh, Father, I pray for those seniors, Lord, as they go out into this world. Uh, Father, just so many different paths, universities, military, Lord. And God, I just pray that you uh, guide them, that you're leading them, Lord, and that uh, they would go out and they would continue the impact that they have left here, that they would make that impact uh, for your kingdom felt known. And God, I pray um, that you would meet with us today, Lord, that we could experience you in, in a great way today, Lord. Father, we need you so much. The service means nothing if you're not present, Lord. We need you here. And Father, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 All right, Brother Mike. Y'all sit right down there. Give me a little room right here, okay? All right. Come on down, kiddos. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, guys, let me let me say this to you. Sometimes we get a little bit excited, so I need y'all to kind of hold your emotions down, okay? And it, and if you do, whoo, they still coming. And if you do, I'm going to let you be part of my kids' sermon today. Okay? Y'all hear me? You're going to get to be part of my sermon today. And you want to do this. Okay? But before I talk to y'all, I got something else I need to do. <clears throat> and I bet y'all thought this was for one of y'all, didn't you? It is for some. Whoa! Woo! That light that messed up. <clears throat> We have a mother here that is 97 years of age and still faithful in our service. <clears throat> and has been a faithful Christian all her life. Happy Mother's Day. How about a hand of... <clears throat> it's ladies like Miss Kelps. And others like Miss Ann and Miss Harriet, and I don't want to miss anyone. Miss Bobby's not here with us anymore. Miss Joyce, that when my kids were here, they thought they had 12 or 13 grandmothers. Seriously. And that's a positive statement because of such love and compassion that was shown to them. And I know y'all treat these kids the same way. And I know y'all probably think when you look out there, you got a whole lot more grandmothers than you really do. And that's wonderful. Okay? All right. <clears throat> Kid sermon today. Let me show you some things, okay? And talk about them real quickly. I won't be too long because Tracy's probably got an hour sermon today. <clears throat> My mom, she's not with us anymore. And I know some of you don't have your mothers anymore. But we can trust they're in heaven, okay? This is oatmeal. And what it represents is my mom made sure every day that I had breakfast. She taught me that breakfast was one of the most important meals of the day, and I was not leaving my house till I had breakfast. Now, it may not be an oatmeal every day, eggs and bacon and sausage and all that, pancakes, all that, but I had breakfast every day. <coughs> My mother also taught me to read. I didn't play Pokemon, okay? Or all those other little games that y'all play, okay? Now, this is not saying that I read these books as faithfully as I needed to, but she encouraged me to get an education, okay? And I'm gonna encourage y'all to get as much education as you can. One of our seniors just told me she's gonna be in the nursing area, right? And that's wonderful. We need people like you, young lady. Okay? 
And for all of you, if you haven't read any Max Lucado's books, and I may not pronounce it the way you do, get these books. They are outstanding. And I've probably read more books in the last few years of my life than I read in my entire life up to now. Okay? And they're so good once you start reading them, you just don't want to put them down. Okay? Another thing my mama insisted on, not a clock, time. She wanted to know what time I was going to be home. And if I didn't get there, if she said be home at 10 o'clock and it was two minutes after 10, she was probably looking for me. Okay? And what? I would have gotten in trouble if I got home late. I can hear it to you. She wanted to know where I was, who I was with, and where I was going, and what time I'd be home. Okay? So she was very faithful about that. And I got something else here. Y'all know what that is? It's a, it's a cleaning product for washing dishes. My mother worked. And while she worked, I took care of my little brother. And I also took care of washing the dishes. There wasn't no child labor laws back then, okay? <laughs> and so I washed those dishes or I paid for it when she got home and they were still in the sink dirty, okay? And I'm going to tell you, how old y'all think I am? About 40? A <laughs> hundred, pretty close. <laughs> 72. And I still wash dishes every single day. Men, you're not too good to help your wives wash dishes. Okay? You put your hands in that dish pan just like the rest of us and help your wife because she's wonderful. Now, a million. <laughs> now, I'm going to tell you all something. You are blessed if you have a mom, a grandmother, or an aunt or somebody that does those four things. Make sure you have something to eat every day. Wants to keep up with you. Wants to see you get a good education. And demands that you do your part. You all can help. You all can carry plates from the table to the kitchen sink, can't you? Yes, yes. If some of you are old enough to put your hands in that sink and wash those dishes or at least wrench them off, okay? Some of you can sweep. Some of you can make beds, okay? If you have a mother that does those four things, you need to hug her neck and thank her and tell her how much you love her for loving you enough to teach you these things, okay? Y'all understand that? That's what mothers is for, and that's what we do, and we love our mothers. Okay, now, what's in the box? Nothing. I just brought it up there where you'd ask. It's a, it's a puzzle. Anyway, <laughs> these are for y'all in a minute. This is a picture, and it just says, God, I'm thankful for my mother, okay? I want y'all to get one of these in a little while, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is a little different. Ladies, you don't have to be a biological mother. Ladies, okay, from 18 years on up, I'm going to ask you to stand in a minute. If you're not able to stand, just raise your hand. These kids are going to bring you a little treat, okay? Because we love you, we support you, we thank you. And I'm going to say this to you. You can be a biological mother, but there's a lot of mothers that have not had children that act like mothers. Grandmothers, aunts, okay? School teachers, okay? You're a mother to a lot of them every day, aren't you? I am too, okay? What? Babysitters, okay? Child caregivers. And the list can go on and on. We could not do without y'all. Okay, so we got a little treat for you, and you guys are going to help me. Okay, if you're sitting over here, I want y'all to go to that side of the church. If you're in the middle, I want you to go down the middle. If you're over here, I want you to go over here. I need some big stout ones like you, okay, to go upstairs. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, at least seven up there, okay? And what we did is... We made y'all some treats, okay?
okay? Now I want all you kids to come and get like four or five and go where I asked you to and hand out all the ladies. Ladies, I want every lady to stand up in the church. Uh, you need three or four. I need every lady. You go to every lady that's standing. When you get your treats, ladies, you may sit down. If you're not able to stand, please just raise your hands. Take these to the ladies. Get candy and go take them out to the ladies. Okay? Go find, go find somebody standing up. Do some more, yes, till we get them all, till everybody gets some, okay? Go to everybody. All right, I think we got enough to go. No, let's, okay, go hand out. All right, go hand out to the ladies. Just one lady, one for each one lady. When you get yours, ladies, you may be seated. Somebody went upstairs, hopefully. Huh. You need some more? No, he's, let him do it. The rest of y'all sit down. Y'all stay here. Come back up here now, kids, once you give candy out. And sit down. Bring me the extra candy back. <clears throat> All right, come on, bring me the extra candy back, please. Put it right there. Uh, I think we got somebody going up there. We got two, three still standing up there. He's up there with the candy. Y'all come on back. Put the extras in the box there. Tracy, I was really sweating. I didn't know how many would be here. So I didn't know if I'd make enough or not. Here we go, girls. Pass one of these to each person. Y'all pass one of these to each person. Okay. Okay, pass one of those around. Now, let me say this to you. The answer is no. Before you ask, you can't keep any. And I'm going to tell you why. You can have that. How did you get that out of there? <laughs> if you remember, one month ago I gave you a dollar and a paper clip. Did y'all practice doing that? No. Well, Okay. Two weeks ago, I gave you what? Uh, Y'all can't remember, can you? Jelly beans. Jelly beans. All right. Even though you're up here for kids' sermon, this day is not about y'all. This day is about these people out here. So I'm not giving y'all anything today. So don't feel bad. That's fine. Just put it right here. Okay? So this is all you're getting from me today. You don't have one, get you one there. Y'all understand? Okay? This day is not per se about you. It's about our mothers. Now, if your mother's here or some lady that you feel really close to, you give them a hug when you go back and tell them how much you love them. Okay? Now, let's pray. All righty? And then, Brother Tracy, you will give them something, won't you? Oh, it, <laughs> if you want to. That's fine. If you, if, let's pray, guys. All right, let's pray. God, we do thank you for our time with our children. And Lord, I just lift up these children and thank you for mothers of these children and what an impact they have on their lives. And Lord, we need more mothers in our country today that will represent Christian values and show kids love like they should be shown. Lord, forgive us where we have failed you. Be merciful to us. Thank you for this day that we set aside to honor our mothers. And all mothers are important. And we love all mothers. And we just ask, Lord, that you take care of mothers. And we ask it all in Christ's name. Amen. You go give your mother a hug and a kiss. Huh? Let me have that back, sweetie. Huh? You give some to your grandma. She here? No, she's at You take one to her. Do you want one of these? You don't want it? Okay. Now, we can't get none of this today, okay? We're going to give that to somebody else, okay? We're going to give that to mothers.
stand if you would. Let's sing when we all get to heaven. I swear it because I didn't know how many mothers would be here. And I didn't know how, how the kids would react. <laughs> sing the wondrous love of first time to visit Central Baptist Church. We are so glad to have you. We trust that, like Brother Mike said a while ago, that you will feel the love of God for those around you. I'll mention this many times and I'll say it again. When we first came to this church, that's what drew us to this church, Amen. was the love that was shown. Amen. Nobody cared what you looked like. Nobody cared how old you were, what your last name was. They cared about the individual. And I trust that we as a church never lose that. Amen. Amen.
no sorrow that ever came to you. Lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your face. this morning for your love, your mercy and grace upon us. Lord, we thank you for this day you've given us, Lord, to come to stand and collectively worship the person of Jesus Christ. Lord, as Brother Tracy brings the message today, Lord, would you give him a clear mind and just allow him to speak or would you speak through him? In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. You be seated. Good morning. If you would, open your Bibles to Psalms 113. Kids outside. Hi, Debbie. Happy Mother's Day. Well, it's a good day to be in the house of the Lord. I think we need to pray for Brother Mike. I'm not sure that everything he said today was led by the Spirit. (laughs) Especially washing those dishes. (laughs) (laughs) Psalms 113, stand with me as we read verses 5 through 9. Who is likened to the Lord our God who dwelleth on high, 
who humbles himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in earth. He raises up the poor out of the dust and lifts the needy out of the dunghill, that he may set him with princes, even with the princes of his people. He maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise ye the Lord. Bow with me for prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for your word, and I pray, Lord, that you'll make it real, alive, and relevant to us this morning. We ask that we might glorify you in all that we say and do, and that Jesus Christ would be lifted up so as that you can draw men unto him. We pray for every soul, every mother, every father, every child that is here today. If they do not have a relationship with you, Father, I pray that they may be led by your spirit to consider their decision today and that they may consider Christ as their Savior. We ask now that you forgive us for we sin, you guide and direct us, and it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Psalm 113 in its entirety is about what a great God Jehovah is. It's not about how great mothers are. It's not about how great motherhood is. It is a song that is often used in the observation of the Passover Seder. It is about what God things, great things God does, how magnificent he is, not only in his power, but also in his humility. I want you to look with me at verse number 6. He humbles himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in earth. Now for you and I, it is a fight to keep from pride entering in, but we can often be humbled if we just simply look around us because there's always somebody that's smarter, better looking, can do more than we can, can do it better than we can. So it's easy to be humbled if we just look around and for the right person. But God has a little different situation. There is nobody more powerful. There is nobody any better. There is nobody that he has to answer to. And yet he humbles himself and he lowers himself to consider our state and our condition. He longs to come down to the earth even though there's nobody bigger and nobody better than he is, he longs to stoop down and goes into the ghettos of this world and into the ghettos of our life in order that he might make a difference and he might change the lives of you and I. He sees the hurting. He sees the poor and the neglected. He reaches down and he touches their life so that he can bring about change. Verse 7 says he raises up the poor out of the dust and lifts the great needy out of the dunghill. God changes the circumstances of our life. And if you've never experienced that, I pray that God will show you his magnificence and that he will change your circumstances in your life. In order that you can see he interjects himself into the affairs of men and for those who seek his face and desire his moving in their life. God brings about an effective change in the lives of the, each other. Notice what he says in verse number 8. That he may set him with princes and with princesses of his people. Now, I had never noticed that before, but a lot of times in our relationships, we come to a relationship with God and God begins to move and to change our life. But we hang on to old relationships. We hang on to people who don't have our best interest in mind. We hang on to relationships and friendships that God would have us to release and turn loose of. God raises you up and he raises me up to set us with the princes of his people, his church, his family, those people who are called by the, by the, the Lord's name, those people who are part of the family of God. And God is big on families. I want you to understand that. God established the family. He established the mama and the daddy. He established the family in the church. He establishes the family around 
and you and I need each other as much as we like to think that we're independent and need to be separated sometimes. God is into families, and you and I need to be part of the family of God. We need to be making a, a difference in each other's lives. Verse number 9 talks about the role of motherhood and how God interjects himself into that. He makes the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise ye the Lord. Now, all the newer translations say he, he makes the barren woman to be part of a family. And that's probably the correct interpretation for the text that we're looking at. But I am just this much of a believer in, in God's grace and God's goodness that he could move in the lives of men to say what he wanted said for a purpose later on. And I like to use this, this morning where it says that he interjects himself into their lives so that the barren woman could keep house. You see, in a lot of women's lives, God needs to establish some order in their lives. He needs to establish that he's first in their life and in their family. A lot of women can't keep house. God sets order in the household. He sets order in the family. And I want you to know that uh, my wife keeps what I consider our house to be in excellent order. But there's times when it becomes a little messy. But there's other things that is more important. She says it is more important for her to spend time on the trampoline with the grandkids than to do the dishes. It is, time, it is more important for her to spend time ministering to the lives of other people than it is for her to vacuum the floors in time. And God, there's certain things that we can do, but first things have to come first. And God sets order in our priorities and in our homes. And we need to establish that in our life. But there's some women God has to set in order for that they'll put him first and foremost in their life before they can be. He needs to get their attention. I think... Uh, uh, Realize that in the lives of women, especially in the times of antiquity when the Bible was written, is that a woman who was not favored or did not have any children was thought to be out of the favor of God. She was not blessed by God if she didn't have children. We see that in Rachel's life. We see that in Hannah's life where they pleaded their case before God, said they would rather be dead if God wasn't going to give them children. And God answered their prayers and met their needs and interjected himself into their lives. Should a woman be divorced or should her husband die, children assure her of a place in the house. So it was so in the days of antiquity that it is apparent that a childless woman was particularly vulnerable to the social current. The phrase that I want you to consider today, let me, a few weeks ago, a lady had asked me the question. She said, if I don't do such and such, does that make me a bad mama? Now, depending upon the needs of the child, that particular instance wouldn't have made her a bad mama if she didn't meet that need. But depending on the circumstances of the child, we have to understand that needs vary. That's why there's no written instructions in the Bible about how you be a good mom. Because there is no set order. Each person has to be led according to the Spirit of God to meet the individual needs of their family and of their household. But she asked that question, would it make me a bad mom? So I just got to contemplating and I got to thinking, what does it take not to keep from being a bad mom, but to be a good mom. What would it take in order for us to be a good mom? And I couldn't help but thinking of the virtuous woman of Psalms 31. Turn over there with me if you would. Proverbs 31.
The text in general refers to the industrial nature of the virtuous woman. She's a busy woman. She's a hardworking. She gets up early. She stays up late. She does things for her family and puts others before herself. She's a very industrious woman. But I want to call your attention to the verses 28 through 31. It talks about her relationship with her family. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but they, thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Her children rise up and call her blessed. What greater reward could a mama have than for her children to stand over her grave and to be able to proclaim what a great mama she was, that she was blessed of God, that she led them by the charge of God to do the things which were right and brought them into a relationship with that Lord and God of their own. The word means that her children confirm that she is lifted up and that she is straight. Their testimony by their reputation and by the words of their mouth, is that she is a positive influence into their lives. I want to ask you, Mama, are you a positive influence in the life of your children? Are you leading them down the path that God would have them to go? She is not a woman who is focused on the vain and deceitful things, but rather she is a woman who fears the Lord. We serve you first and foremost in your, your life in order for you to be the mama God wants you to be is you have to first have a relationship with the Lord. You cannot be the mama God wants you to be until you first become the person God wants you to be and that is built around a personal relationship with him. You see, it was God who established and designed the family. It is God who sets things in order. It is the mothers that God has brought us into a focal point of today. And are you going to be the influence that God wants you to be? Or are you going to be the influence that the world wants you to be? You must establish your priorities and what is most important. God has designed you to be the mom he wants you to be. This is to say, mom, you can't be the mother that God wants you to be until you first have the right relationship. I'll say this again, until you first have the right relationship with him. Now there's a lot of people who claim to have a relationship with the Lord, but is it the relationship God wants you to have? Is it just a vain relationship with God to where you can take or leave getting your children to Bible study on time, whether you have no real desire to pray for your children, pray for your family? Is that's not the kind of relationship that God wants you to have. You can't be the person you need to be as a mom until you become the person God has designed you to be. You cannot have a relationship with God and contribute all you need to be. That's not to say that if you don't have a relationship with the Lord, you can't be a decent mom. There's been people I've known that are lost, don't go to church, don't have any desire to go to church, don't desire to worship and to serve God, but they have a very positive influence in their children's life. But that's because they follow certain principles that God has designed in the family and they pray for and minister to their children and their needs and teach them to do the right things according to God's word regardless of their church membership and the things that they do. You can be a positive force simply by being the person God calls you to be according to his word. The most important thing in your children's life is that they have a saving relationship with their creator. Listen to me. The most important thing your children have in their life is to have a saving relationship with their creator. Whether they become a lawyer, a doctor, a nurse, they can become anything that this world desires them to be, but they cannot be the person and the most important thing in their life needs to be that they have a relationship with their creator, the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, if they have that, they can find peace and joy 
in whatever career they choose, if they're following and leaning upon the Lord in their relationship with Him. How can you direct them to a place of joy and peace if you don't have it as a mom? As a mom, how can you take your children to a place of a relationship with the living God if you yourself don't have that relationship? If you don't have a means on which you can rely on, a relationship on which you can rely on. You have to be a believer and a follower of Christ in order to lead your children into a relationship with Christ. One of the contributions, uh, one of the first characteristics that a woman needs to have if she's going to be a good mama is she needs to have a woman, be a woman of faith. Living in God manifests itself in many ways. Number one, if she's, a, if she's got a faith in God, one thing she's going to want to do is to pray for her children. You and I are to bow our knees every day and pray for our children. Whether you're a mama or whether you're a daddy, we need to pray for our children. We're living in a world today, I want you to understand, where by the groves our children are being led astray. They're being led down a path of darkness. And we need to pray that our children will be protected by the hand of God, by the work of God. Hannah was a good example of one who prayed that God manifest her, God's will in her son's life. She gave him Samuel up to be a servant in the tabernacle when he was six years old. But she was continued to pray for him all the days of his life. John Wesley and James Wesley were great preachers. You can research it out and research the magnificent preachers, proclaimers of the gospel. They came from a large family. I don't remember if it was six, seven, or eight children, but it was a lot of children. But their mother dedicated one hour a day, dedicated, shut the door, didn't want the children to bother her for an hour a day so that she could pray for her children. She prayed earnestly and heartily, steadily, for her children. She was faithful in that prayer for her children. She called by their own testimony. She would call each child in at least once a week and talk to them about their relationship with God and what was going on in their lives and if God was real and what he was doing in their life. She made a difference in their lives. Not only did she make them so that they had a relationship with God, but she touched their life in such a manner that thousands of others were touched by the proclamation of the gospel that those men carried on because she was a caring mother and she prayed for the well-being of her children. The impact of that kind of a mother reaches beyond the life of her own child, but through their lives she is able to affect the lives of many more. Secondly, a mother must be an educator. When we think about education, we think about the educational system of the world. But I want you to understand this, folks. We expect too much out of our educational system. I'm not talking about the teachers are failing. I'm talking about the system is a failure in some areas of our lives. It can't, we can't expect them to teach good morals and good values. In a system that is designed by the world, the effect can't be good. I'm thankful for the godly teachers we have that work in the, in the educational system who are able to impact the children with their own faith, with their own testimonies as they witness to them. But you have to understand that the world system is going to take your child down a path you don't want them to go. We need to educate our children we need, as far as the righteous virtues of God and God's desire for virtue in their life. We need to teach them those things and make sure that they know them so that they can combat the evils that they face out in this world, and they can combat the things that they might come in contact with. And for those of you, excuse me, for those of you who are college educated, I'm not. I went a couple semesters, and I was amazed at how, even in my years ago, that's been a long time ago, since I was a freshman in college, but it amazed me how liberal-minded the professors are and how far they will try to take you away from the things of God. 
we need to protect our children and make sure they've got a solid, solid ground, solid foundation before they enter into that thing. And I, and I, I encourage our young people who are graduating this year, know what you believe. Know what you believe and understand why you believe it because there'll be somebody that's going to try to change your beliefs and what you stand for. Know why you believe what you do. It is because of her faith that a godly mom can trust in Proverbs 22, 6, where the scripture says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. It is that godly mom who can trust that word, that no matter where you see your children going astray, you know you've done what God's told you to do, you know you've taught them the things of God, and you can believe that God's going to bring them back. Some point in time in their life, you can believe that God's going to bring them back because his word has declared it. You have done your job, and by faith, you can trust God's word. By the education and the respect that is taught for authority and respect for others and for the elders. We live in a world today where there is little respect and little regard for our fellow man. For authority, I want to tell you something. Black lives matter. White lives matter. But if people will respect authority and will do what they're supposed to do when authority tells them to do so, we won't have near the kind of trouble that we have in our society that we have today. There simply needs simply to be a respect for authority given. Now, not every policeman is a good policeman. Not every policeman is corrupt, though. And we need to realize that simply by obeying authority in our life, we can bring about a real uh, peace in our society. Let every soul be subject unto higher powers, for there is no power of God but of God, the powers that are ordained of God. We need to realize that people are put in positions by God's will and God's plan in our life. They may not all be good, but your interaction with them is not a surprise to God. He's got them where they are. He's got you where you are. And you need to act in a manner and show the respect to the person whether they deserve it or not simply because they're in a position of authority and rule. We need to be people who honor authority. We need to teach our children to do so. It's amazing to me what some children have the nerve to do and to say to their teachers nowadays that we would have never thought of saying and doing when I was in school. It's amazing to me how little respect is given for the adults uh, by some of the children that are in schools today. We're living in a culture and a time when young people are being drawn away by the hundreds of thousands. And it is not through the teaching of some TV evangelist or some little preacher in Podunk Thornton today that's going to change their life. It's going to be moms and dads who determine in their life that they're going to train up their child in the way they should go. They're going to train them to know God's word. They're going to pray for them. They're going to lift them up. That they're going to encourage them in the things of God and that they will make a difference for the kingdom of God. If, if America is going to be turned around, I guarantee you it's not going to be because I did it or because some TV evangelist did it. It's going to be because mom and dad sold out for Jesus Christ and they led them down the right path. Verse 26 in Proverbs that we just read says she opens her mouth with wisdom and her tongue is the law of kindness. She opens her mouth with wisdom. The things that come out of a mom's mouth need to be thoughtful words. Something that is well thought out. It's not some kind of screaming, ranting, raging release of anger but it needs to be something that is well thought out 
something that is well expressed. It needs to be the wisdom of God expressed in those things. I want you to think about it for a few minutes, but too often we get either vilely angry or profane. We, profanity comes out of our mouth and we have these great big dramatic rages when there really shouldn't be any. We need to be able to speak peace and we need to be able to speak kindness. We need to be able to speak logically into our children's lives. There's too many people in this world that are oh, sitting in a filling station eating a hamburger or a patty melt the other day. And some guy came in ranting and raving and raised and came. And I'm not sure what it was about. But they said he comes in like that every day when he's drinking. Something is the matter with that individual internally. And as the guy I was eating lunch with said, how easily that can escalate into what we hear so often of a shooting that takes place. And that's right. But that individual is formed like that. I want you to understand somewhere in his background, Satan got a foothold into his life. And moms and dads, we have to realize that we can either give God a foothold in our kids' lives or we can give Satan a foothold in our kids' lives. But we need to be able to raise our children in a manner where they've got stable minds, they can understand, and it has to come from a, a peaceful environment that's in the home. Moms, we need to be able to express ourselves without any kind of overly dramatic rages. What needs to be spoken needs to be measured out and it needs to be measured out by the relationship that we have with our Heavenly Father. Because of the relationship and knowledge of Him, the words that we carry should be the words of life, words that are beneficial to those that hear Him, beneficial to those that receive them, and it ought to be the words of kindness. Now, when I was raising my children... I was one of those persons that had probably some issues in my life. I could become angry way too quick, become harsh in my punishment. My wife was a calming voice in my life. She spoke peace. She spoke restraint. She spoke wisdom and love into my life. Women... You can have a lot greater impact than you imagine if you very quietly and knowingly are led by the Spirit of God so that you can speak restraint and peace into the life of your family, whether it be your husband or your children. You have that ability. You have a much greater impact than you imagine. I want you to understand today God has blessed me with a great family. I am a richly blessed man. But it happened because he gave me the right wife. He gave my children the right mother. You can have an impact like you cannot imagine if you'll let God lead you. Let God stir up his spirit within you. You can speak peace and hope into your family and your children will grow up to be grateful. Grateful for the mother and the dad that God gave them. Bow with me for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for your mercy and your grace. And Father, I pray that you would bring about a sense of conviction into our lives, not just our mothers, but our dads too. That we could put you first in our life. 
And then we would be the kind of parent that you desire us to be. That we would invest time in prayer, time in love, time in Bible study. That dads would lead their children in prayer. That moms would be able to speak reasonably, quietly into the lives of their children and into the lives of their husbands. Lord God, I thank you for your mercy and for your grace. I thank you for an abiding love that you have for us. And Lord, I know that in America today, we need your grace and mercy more than ever. Help us to be the kind of parents we need to be. Help us to be the preacher and the teacher and the Sunday school teacher and the school teacher that we need to be. Help us to touch the lives of the children that you've given us for the honor and the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. May he be glorified by us and through us. We ask now that you forgive us where we sin, and it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.